Matteo. Uh, thank you everyone for uh, sticking with it. And uh, um, so let me start sharing the uh, screen. And uh, oh, I see already quite a few chat messages. It's just uh, hello and. Uh... Oh, okay, it's just hellos. But uh, yeah, that's that's. Uh, <laughs> I was a little bit gosh. There's many questions before I even start. So uh, uh, I'll have a look at the chat uh, and uh, tell you when there are questions. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you, Matteo. Uh, but before we start. Um, are there any questions regarding uh, the last two lectures before we move on? Okay, so if not, then the, uh, what we're going to go for now is uh, the, today is the multivariate normal distribution. So we're moving from one dimensional distributions to to this distribution. So multivariate. And, uh, and this is particularly relevant because uh, as you know, the course is called probabilistic modeling. And in fact, a fairly large class of models, so all linear models essentially, can be understood in terms of multivariate Gaussian distributions and the computations that you need to do on these models uh, to do Bayesian inference are simply conditioning and marginalizing multivariate Gaussians, <clears throat> which is a particularly important task. So the one thing that I will use uh, heavily today from last week's lecture is the uh, is the change of variable formula. Okay, so I'll recall that if you have a random variable x distributed according to, let's say, px of x, and you have a deterministic function, then the distribution of y is the distribution of x, the density of x evaluated at f minus one of y times the derivative to the minus one evaluated at f minus one of y. And as someone uh, observed last time, all that I'm saying here is basically saying that py dy has to be equal to px dx. Okay? If we want to use, um, you know, a simple, although not entirely accurate mathematical uh, notation. Okay? So one useful exercise which for you guys to do so let x be distributed according to uh, a Gaussian distribution with mean zero and um, variance one then show that P of Y for Y equals X squared is a gamma. Distribution. And in fact, it is a special gamma. It's a gamma that is called a chi-squared 
So it's got a particular um, shape parameter which indicates that it's um, the square of the Gaussian. Another immediate uh, application of the change of variables rule is that if I have X that is distributed according to a Gaussian, then Y equals A times X, where A is uh, any number, real number, Y is also going to be distributed according to a Gaussian, still with mean zero and with variance A squared. Okay. So I saw that there was a message in the chat and uh, I'm not sure how to get to the messages. So if you have a question, just unmute yourself and ask it, please. Uh, it's by far the easiest thing, because when I'm sharing the screen, it's, um, oh no, it's still a good afternoon one, good. Uh, so this is a, a very simple consequence. If you wish to use the change of variable formula, the fact that uh, the, um, you have to replace instead of uh, X, y divided by a and so the density would become e to the minus y squared divided by a squared but you also have to have a square root of a squared in front of it which is the derivative part yeah? now the second fact that uh, i'll let you prove as an exercise or you can take it on faith but it's 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 straightforward So let x1 be distributed according to a Gaussian distribution, this time with a mean m1 and variance s1 squared, and x2 being distributed as another Gaussian distribution with mean m2 and variance s2 squared, then y equals x1 plus x2 is also a Gaussian distributed variable with mean m1 plus m2 and variance, the sum of the variances. Okay. So this is a, uh, they're all well-known facts. Of course, you can rescale a Gaussian and it will remain a Gaussian. You can sum two independent Gaussians and they will remain, will give rise to a third Gaussian distributed random value. So now the question is, let's assume now that we have uh, D Gaussian variables. So all of them are distributed according to a standard Gaussian with mean zero and variance one. And they're all independent. So I can gather these random variables in obviously a vector in Rd. And because they're all independent, it's trivial that the density now in d dimensions of this um, vector, random, ve random vector, is going to be the product of, let's say, p1 of x1 times pd of xd. And by a trivial calculation, I can rewrite it as, uh, you know, each of these is an exponential of minus xi squared. So I can rewrite it as 
1 over z exponential of the square norm of x with a minus sign and then 2. Okay, so this is my simplest type of multivariate normal distribu distribution is the one which has got zero mean and spherical unitary variance. So I can rewrite it as, and I use the same symbol N for the one dimensional Gaussian and the multivariate Gaussian, but I'll put a squiggle underneath for the vectors. So the mean is a vector of zeros here. And instead of a variance, I have a matrix, which is the variance covariance matrix, which is the identity in the dimensions. Now, all multivariate normal Gaussians can be obtained from this basic multivariate normal Gaussian via linear, linear um, operations, linear and affine operations. Yeah? So if I define now y equals to ax, where a is a d by d matrix, plus m, Now, this, each entry of the y vector, so m is a, is a parameter vector, of course, so it's, a, it's not a random variable, it's a number on R, in Rd. Each entry of the y vector is a linear combination of axes, so of Gaussian variables, plus a constant. So I certainly have that y is going to be Gaussian distributed as well. Yeah? Now the question is what is going to be its mean and its variance covariance matrix. Yeah? So if I move to higher dimensions instead of a single number for the mean and a single variance number for the variance, I need a vector for the mean and the matrix for the variance. So I can calculate these very easily because the mean vector by definition of mean is the expectation of the random variable y. So the random variable y is obtained from this formula. So it is a times the random vector x plus the constant vector m. Now the expectation is a, is a linear operator. So this will be a times the expectation of x and the expectation of a constant is just a constant itself. The expectation of x is zero because I've started with the centered spherical Gaussian. So this is just m. So the constant shift is the mean. Yeah, uh, we have a, a, a question. Oh, I missed the question. Okay. What about the variance sigma? How do I calculate the variance sigma? Well, sigma by definition of variance is the expectation of the squared minus the square of the expectation. Yeah? So the expectation of the squared here, since it is a matrix, I have to take X times X transposed. This is the covariance matrix minus E of X times E of X transpose. Now E of X, uh, uh, sorry, I meant Y. Yeah, so we got, so I see things flashing, but then they, I oh know, here it is. Professor, can you show the formula for variance covariance matrix ID of the x vector, yeah? So the various, so id is just, is the identity in the dimensions, yeah? So it's one, 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 a big zero here and a big zero here. Okay. 
Okay. And then of course, sigma is not the variance of X, it's the variance of, is the covariance of Y. And um, okay. Now the expectation of Y is uh, um, M, as we have already computed. So we have expectation of. Using the formula for y, I put ax plus m times ax plus m transpose minus m m transpose. Okay. Now I have to work on this. Now, using the linearity of the expectation, I get a expectation of x x transpose times a transpose so i've taken the product of the two terms the quadratic term in x then i get plus twice a expectation of x times m transpose minus the expectation of m is a uh, plus sorry the expectation of m is m itself m and transpose minus m m transpose okay so these two terms go away this term the expectation of x is zero yeah because X is a, a centered spherical Gaussian. Now the expectation of X is zero, the expectation of X X transpose, it's its second moment, which corresponds to its variance covariance matrix because the mean is zero. So the expectation of X X transpose is the identity in the dimension. And so we have that Y is distributed according to a Gaussian with mean M and variance covariance matrix A transpose, okay? Notice that it makes sense because of course, the variance covariance matrix of a Gaussian distribution needs to be a positive semi-definite matrix. And this is a positive semi-definite matrix because it's the square of the matrix essentially, okay? So these, straight away tells you how you can, for example, sample general Gaussian vectors. So if someone asks you to sample values y from a Gaussian with mean mu and covariance sigma, then what you need to do is sample x from n0, 1. So sample independently each entry of a vector with d dimensions, then compute a such that a, a transpose equal sigma d. There are many algorithms for computing the, the uh, square root of a matrix, but uh, the best numerically stable one is the so-called Cholesky decomposition. And then compute. Y as AX plus U. Okay, so 
In many cases, I mean, it happens quite frequently, actually, you might have to sample random variables from a specific distribution. If your specific distribution is a multivariate Gaussian with a particular correlative structure, all you need to do is to compute the square root of the covariance matrix and then transform spherical Gaussians to obtain general uh, multilinear matrices, multilinear and uh, multivariate Gaussian matrices. Okay, so just to recall very briefly the steps. So to introduce the, the multivariate Gaussian distribution, uh, we started from spherical Gaussian and we showed that you can obtain the general multivariate because I can obtain any sigma and any mu by taking a linear transformation of the spherical Gaussian. And in particular, of course, the, um, you know, the sigma that we compute as AA transpose contains all the various correlations of the variables because all the correlations are induced by this linear transformation. And this as a bonus shows us how we can compute, how we can sample random vectors that have got a particular correlative structure. So let's take a, a, a one minute stop for questions. If there are any, either unmute yourself, which is the best solution, I think, or By the way, because of the change of variables formula, we also know what will be uh, the um, what will be the density function of a multivariate uh, variate, uh, multivariate Gaussian. What you need to, what you will have is um, that y will be distributed according to, uh, you know, I have to have my exponential bit first, minus a half. So where I had x, I'm going to have, I have to replace x with um, y minus mu times the inverse of the square root of sigma d. So I'll have y minus mu and then So I can either take it as an invertible matrix, as a, um, yeah. and then because of the inverse of the derivative, I'm going to have a determinant coming out here. The square root of the determinant, which is this thing here. So in short, Yeah, there should be a D. So this is the PDF of the multivariate Gaussian. Now, um, one advantage of uh, the derivation that we've made is that it's immediately clear that the entries of the sigma Variance covariance matrix are the correlations in the second moments of the uh, 
Gaussian. Yeah? So now if I want to marginalize, I'll go to the question. Uh, t, uh, t exponent, sorry, t, Lucio, T is not an exponent, is a transpose. Okay. And so you can either take it to be symmetric. Yeah, okay, fine. Oh, more. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. Uh, so uh, sigma is indeed. I mean, it ha it is symmetric. It doesn't have. To, does it have to be symmetric? Uh, yeah, sigma yeah. has to be symmetric. You see, yeah. and sigma will be symmetric because it's a a transpose. So if you transpose this, you know, when you transpose the product of matrices, you transpose the the um, the individual matrix, but you also swap the order. So if you transpose the a a transpose, you will get a a transpose again. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks. So it has to to be symmetric. Then uh, why do we need that algorithm to find a uh, square root? I mean, uh, you said we need to find the square root of sigma. I mean, why would we need that then? And why do we need that? Because uh, to sample, I mean, this is what, um, you know. Oh, to get a, but I mean, it, it won't be a, right? It would be square root of a, a transpose, which won't be a. The, the square root, yeah, yeah, but normally you're not told a. Normally you are given sigma. You said, give me samples from this general Gaussian with this variance covariance matrix sigma. Then you have to compute the square root of it, of sigma. Yeah, um, so what I'm asking is, uh, it is to find A, we use square root of sigma, right? Yeah. Uh, but uh, square root of A transpose is not going to be A. Square root uh, in the square, yes, square root of AA transpose is going to be A because the definition of, um, um, of, I mean, of square root of matrix is a matrix such that AA transpose is going to be. Okay. So, so it's this definition of square root. Thanks. So there's ma many things that we may want to do uh, with um, Gaussians, multivariate Gaussians, and, and a simple one is marginalizing them. Okay, so suppose we have now a 3D Gaussian. So our vector, um, Y, is made up of three numbers, y1, y2, y3. And is distributed according to Gaussian with a certain mean and a certain variance covariance matrix, okay? Now, if I'm interested in, let's say, a projection, let's call it projection one, two of y, which is a vector, uh, y hat, which consists only of the first two components. So I'm marginalizing out the third component. So what is the distribution of this vector? Now, obviously it's going to be a Gaussian, but how do we compute its mean and its variance covariance matrix? Well, it's actually really very simple. So what is the expectation of y hat? Well, I have to take the expectation of y1 and the expectation of y2, and that's obviously going to be mu1, mu2, uh, without a squiggle underneath. Which is the projection one, two, applied to the mu vector. Yeah. What about the variance covariance? So we know that this is pi one, two applied to the mu vector. What about the variance covariance matrix? Okay, so what is going to be 
Um, well, what, variance of y hat. Well, what we need to do, as we did before, is compute the expectation of y hat, y hat transport. Yeah. But hang on a sec, that's just going to be, you know, the first two by two rectangle uh, square in the sigma matrix. Yeah? So this is going to be equal to the sigma matrix, where I take just a chunk. Okay, because this is going to be, you know, the, the, the little matrix expectation of Y1, Y on transpose, well, this is a number. And so on. So Y hat, which is the projection on the first two axes of Y, is going to be normally distributed with the mean, which is the projection of the mean vector. And uh, a variance covariance matrix, which is obtained by applying, let's say, the projection to the two sides of the variance. Yeah? So, and that is equivalent to selecting the first two rows and the first two columns, the indices up to two. Okay. So marginalizing means removing entries, essentially, in multivariate capsules. The other thing that we might be interested in doing is conditioning. Now, conditioning is a bit. So let's say we have a vector y. Again, is three dimensional. And it's distributed according to a Gaussian with mean mu and variance covariance matrix sigma. And now suppose that you fix, let's say, y3. What is the distribution of the remaining two entries, y1, y2? Uh, excuse me, professor. Yes, please. So you said I, I, I didn't catch the last thing. You said marginalizing is removing what? Entries. It's just basically, you know, you take away, so if you're marginalizing the third entry, you take away the third entry from the mean vector, and okay. you take away the third column and the third row from the Okay, okay. I, okay, I understand. I, I see. It was just a bit illegible. Uh, but oh, yeah, you. yeah, you're right. It's totally illegible. Let's, let's write it a little bit better, so. Entries. Better. What about conditioning? Thanks. Sorry. Uh, yes. So, can you again repeat what is projection? Uh, projection uh, y one. I mean, what you wrote as pi and two. I didn't. Yeah, know. projection just means that uh, you know, mathematically you can see it as projecting on the hyperplane defined as uh, y three equals zero. Yeah. So parameterized by y one and y two. Okay, uh, I mean, uh, like, why? I mean, why did you? I mean, I understand this marginal marginal marginalization, but I don't understand why you use uh, this notation. I mean, yeah. Okay, so the the, the question is is a, is a, is a good one. So why is marginalizing just ignoring one? Uh, well, th that is what marginalizing is. Yeah. So marginalizing means regardless of all. Of, of the third vector, for example, the third dimension of the vector. 
here we're marginalizing y3. Eh? So it means what is the distribution of y1 and y2 regardless, regardless of what y3 is doing? Yeah. And what I need to do is essentially averaging out y3. So the way I've introduced it, marginalization on uh, Monday, is by doing an average. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, thank you. I, no. But what I'm showing you here, that's, that's, that's why it's kind of interesting and not entirely trivial, is that um, doing that average in the Gaussian world is equivalent to just removing entries. Yeah. So y1 and y2 are random variables on their own accord. They're going to be Gaussian random variables because they're obtained from the big Y, y1, y2, y3, by a linear operation, which is this projection. What is going to be the distribution of these Gaussian random variables? Well, we have to compute its, since they're Gaussian, its first and second moment. And to compute that, we can either do an integral, which is a pain, or we can use the linear transformation on the moments, which is what I've done here. So that's why, so that the kind of the message that I wanted to uh, convey really in this lecture, but particularly in this part, is that in the Gaussian world, because you know that the distribution is entirely determined by the first and the second moment, then you can obtain the same results by computing moments, which can be much easier as it is in this case, as you can do by doing integrals. So I saw there was another question popping up here. Uh, why is Y1? Uh, yes, of course. It's, it's um, yeah, it, it, well, I mean, the transpose of a scalar is, is, is itself. So let's, let's just remove it for, for the sake of clarity. Yeah, one more question. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so that, that's, that's not an entirely trivial thing that because you're in Gaussian world, you can do computations on the moments and that is the same thing as, as marginalized. Uh, now conditioning instead is a little bit more complicated. Uh, so what is the distribution of Y1, Y2? Well, we, we have to, to look at it. So it's going to be a Gaussian again. And why is it going to be a Gaussian? Well, how would we compute? So what is going to be P of Y1, Y2 given Y3, okay? Well, let's just write out the, uh, the, full, uh, the, the, the full gory details. So we have a normalization constant, then we have Exponential of minus a half y minus mu transposed sigma minus one y minus mu. So this is the, the full, but here, you know, we fix y3. So y3 is a number now, it's no longer a random variable. That's how you do condition. You stick the number in the formula. Okay, and we kind of have to write it out. So we define sigma as then here we would have uh, sigma uh, one, two, comma three, sigma three, comma one, two, sigma three, three. In the end, so what is clear, it is, it's still going to be a Gaussian, yeah? Because if you stick a number here, this will remain a quadratic form in y1, y2. So the exponential of minus the quadratic form is still a Gaussian. 
The problem is that you have to invert this partition matrix. So this is one of the most painful calculations, particularly when you have more than three dimensional uh, matrices, you have to look up something called uh, the partition inverse formula. Uh, excuse me. Could you perhaps specify what is, for instance, uh, sigma one, two, comma three? All ah, right, yeah, yeah. So, okay, <laughs> that's fair enough. So what I'm trying to do, sigma is a, is a three by three matrix. Yeah? So I want to retain the, so I'm selecting the first two variables as special and the third one as special because the third one I'm fixing as a number. So I'm dividing the three by three matrix in a two by two matrix, which is the covariance matrix before between the first two entries. And then a vector here, which is the covariance between y1 and y3 and y2 and y3. So this is a two by one vector. This is its transpose. And this is the variance of y3. Okay, awesome, thank you. Yeah. Sir, to get this one, did you directly use the Bayes theorem? Uh, no, uh, I mean, I'm not, there is a good reason why Bayes is involved, but you don't have to use Bayes theorem, you're just conditioning. So directly Y3, you just substitute the value of Y3 in the- Absolutely, system. that's how you do conditioning. You substitute a value in. Okay. And uh, so, as I said, this is quite a, a, a rather painful calculation and you need to look up something called the partition inverse formula. Which is a rather lengthy formula in terms of the inverses of these various matrices. Now, that tells you basically the blocks, the inverses of the blocks. So it's also called the block inverse. Block matrix. Now, I don't want to go into this, but look it up if you wish. There is another thing. So there are two ways in which you can define Gaussians. Okay. So what we've started here, you see, when we started talking about marginalizing, we start with a multivariate Gaussian and give its mean and its variance covariance matrix. And then we've seen that in this case, marginalizing is trivial, but conditioning is rather painful because you have to do these matrix, in matrix inverse. The other way in which you can specify Gaussians is by giving equations. So multivariate Gaussians, this is more interesting Because I could say, for example, that, you know, X might be, uh, uh, you know, a two-dimensional Gaussian. And then I could say that Y, for example, is equal to a x plus epsilon. So it's another random variable, y condition on x, where epsilon is Gaussian. Okay. 
So what does it mean to have this equation? It just means I have a random variable x and I'm observing a linear transformation of x plus noise. Now, what happens here is that the pair x and y, which are uh, a four-dimensional vector, and they're also a four-dimensional random variable, which, because it is linear, is going to be Gaussian distributed. But what are going to be their uh, distribution? What, what is going to be the distribution of this? Well, the mean is very easy. So let's call this vector uh, Z. Okay, so the first two and two uh, variables. So this is going to be a concatenation of the expectation of X and the expectation of Y. And I can write it out straight away. The expectation of X is mu X. The expectation of Y is A times the expectation of X plus the expectation of Epsilon. But this one is zero. And this one is mu X. So in the end, I have that the expectation of Z is the concatenation of the means. So the mean is mu x, and then the mean of y, which is a linear transformation, is a times mu x. What about the sigma of this linear transformation of this, this four-dimensional Gaussian, which is defined starting from a two-dimensional Gaussian and a linear equation? Yeah. Now, to compute this, I need to do exactly the same computation as I did before for my definition of the multivariate Gaussian. And what I will get is uh, a matrix that has got sigma x and then has got a sigma x a transpose, okay? Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is that Defining multivariate Gaussians as equations has a huge advantage in terms of conditionals because I could just say, so I've defined Z as the concatenation of y, uh, X and Y, but I could also just write that P of Z is going to be equal to P of y given x times p of x, okay? because z is, you know, it's a four-dimensional thing, which is made up of two two-dimensional things. And p of x, I know it is mu x sigma x. p of x of y given x is trivial when it is given in terms of condition of equations, yeah? Because an equation is a conditional, essentially. So if I know X, well, what do I need to do to get Y? I just multiply it by the matrix A, and then I add some Gaussian noise. P of Y given X, in this equation-centric world, is just going to be a Gaussian with mean AX, because X, when I'm conditioning on it, that means I'm sticking the value in, I'm fixing it. 
and then sigma squared the identity. Okay. Why do I insist on this conditioning? Because someone asked before, are we already doing Bayes' theorem? Well, we pretty much are. So one simplest calculation that we can do with Bayesian uh, inference is to think of uh, observing Gaussian random variables linearly. Okay, so suppose I have now my y, which is, uh, well, let, let, let's make it a scalar for a change. A transpose x plus epsilon. So I'm observing with spherical Gaussian noise a random variable x, which gets multiplied by uh, um, by a vector a. So the um, oh, if I, uh, let, let's keep it in the two-dimensional case. In the multi-dimensional case. So I'm observing via an observation process which is multiplying by this matrix a. I'm observing a random variable x with noise epsilon. Now, the question could be what is p? So we have a very easy way of computing the condition of y over x, and we have a prior over x. So the question now becomes what is p of x given y? So what is the posterior? To do this, we need to apply Bayes' theorem. So we have that uh, this is proportional to the joint distribution. So it's joint distribution where I then stick y equal to a constant. And this joint distribution, I write it as uh, the product of the other conditional, that is my equation times my prior, okay? Excuse uh, me. Yes, please. Uh, at first you wrote a, a transpose uh, uh, at the first line. At Why? which line? First line, uh, at, at first, no, no, the last, the last page. You yeah, because wrote, I was, yeah. So I yeah, get, I didn't get it. What uh, why it changed? Uh, I get I changed it because I was uh, well because I made a mistake. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 Happens to me as well. <laughs> okay, so don't worry. This is the correct thing that I meant to say. Uh, let me see. There is another question. Oh, and yeah, what about multiplicative noise? You know, multiplicative noise makes things a lot harder. So if you have multiplicative noise, then you are not uh, in a conditionally, you're not in a Gaussian posterior world. So your posterior will no longer be Gaussian and you can't do uh, these kind of computations analytically in general. So. The world of Gaussians is limited to the linear world where you can add and rescale by constant, but not multiply um, random variables. Uh, the, 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 the simple thing is that if you have the multiplication of two random variables, then you know when you go into the Gaussian, you have to take the square and you get some quadratic terms essentially. So let me oh. One more question. Um, yeah. So let me finish this calculation. This the first basic calculation we really are doing in our lives, at least in this course. So let's not worry about the normalization constants. 
So here, we're going to have exponential of minus one half. Let's make it a brace. So it's the product of the two densities, so they just sum. And we've got uh, one minus, y minus x transpose times y, uh, sorry, y, y minus ax transpose times y minus ax times one over sigma squared. Yeah, that's, that's my conditional. You see, this is the conditional that I put in. And then I have a term which comes from the prior, which is x minus mu transpose sigma x minus one, x minus mu. Okay, so this is it. This is the P of x. And this is the P of y given x that is implied by my equation form, okay? And this was called mu x. Now I want to know what is the probability of x given y. As I said, when you want the probability of x given y, when you're conditioning on something, you're fixing it. So what it means, I look at this um, quadratic form and I want to identify the uh, quadratic terms and the linear terms. So I know that this must be equal, uh, well, let's, say, let's say it's at prime, to x of minus a half x minus m transpose c to the minus one x minus m. So I'm writing the most generic quadratic form in x. And this corresponds to a Gaussian with mean m and variance covariance matrix c. And this will be the posterior mean and the posterior variance covariance matrix. How do I identify them? Well, I have to compare the terms here, okay? So by looking up here, I see, so on the, on the left, I will have a term, the quadratic term would be x transpose c to the minus one x. Yeah, that comes here has to be equal to the quadratic term here. The quadratic term here, I've got a term coming from the prior, the sigma x minus one, and then I've got terms coming from the likelihood, so from the observation. So this has got to be equal to x transpose um, a transpose a divided by sigma squared x. plus x transpose sigma x minus one x, okay? So these are the, you see, if I uh, develop the square here, I get x transpose a, a uh, x transpose a transpose a x divided by sigma squared, and I get a sigma minus one. So the posterior covariance uh, is going to be equals, will be, a transpose a divided by sigma squared plus the inverse of the prior or to the minus one. And then I do the same thing with the linear terms and then I will stop because I'm out of time. I would have x transpose c to the minus one m from here x transpose c to the minus one m. And then this is going to be equal. What are the linear terms here? Well, I got some linear terms from the mean and I got some linear terms here. 
So I'll have an X transpose, A transpose divided by sigma squared. Why? And then I'll have uh, some X transpose sigma X to the minus one, mu X. Okay, and so M, the posterior mean, is going to be equal to C, the posterior covariance, times A transpose y divided by sigma squared plus okay so one small observation notice that the smaller the um, observation noise the more dominant the term coming from y so the, the smaller the observation noise, the sigma squared or the observation, the variance of the observation, then the closer our posterior mean will be to what the um, observation is telling us, which is very reassuring. So this is our first Bayesian calculation. So we computed, uh, we have a Bayesian random variable, a Gaussian random variable observed with Gaussian noise and we condition to obtain the posterior over x or over y, uh, over x given our observation. So I think my lecture is now out of time. Uh, I kind of said most of the things that I wanted to say, but uh, if you have uh, any questions, please ask now or, say, or write them down and like, you can email them to the um, secretary and they can be passed on to me or something like that because I realize that we've compressed quite a bit today. Um, I have a question. Yes, please. Um, why is the uh, projection of a Gaussian variable another Gaussian variable? I didn't get it very well. Because uh, a projection is a linear operator, yeah? And every linear operation on a Gaussian remains a Gaussian. Okay, thank you. Okay. There's another thing in the chat. Is that a question? Uh, 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 okay. Uh, has the reference for today's lecture and lecture note been uploaded in a website or matrix or will it be uploaded? I think if you look at the Mackay book, all of these things are there in the chapter uh, around 23, I think, on probability distributions. Uh, excuse me, Professor, are there yes. maybe exercises perhaps from that uh, same book that we could do to help us better understand? I think, uh -huh. you know, if you read that book, that will help you a lot in all your life. Uh, it's an excellent <laughs> Professor, okay, can you repeat the reference name again, please? It's, a, it's on the website. It's a Information Theory, Inference, and Learning Algorithms uh, by David Mackay. Thank you. Uh, yes, and uh, there are a lot of uh, exercises in that book also. Yeah. Uh, very, very uh, useful to get uh, a grasp of Bayesian inference. And information theory, and I mean, I think you'd be, if you know that book very well, then you know you can come and teach us. Okay, so uh, if there are no other questions. Then um, uh, we take a short break of ten minutes, and then uh, uh, go uh, with the second lecture of uh, Domenica Boetti. Okay, ciao everyone. Uh, thank you, Guido. Sharing. 
Ciao Matteo. Ciao, come stai? Bene, tu? Ah, uh, let me stop recording. You can gossip. <laughs>